Hey, how's it going everybody? It's the Game Economist, and today I'm working with the Mangrub Staff. Mangrub Staff is a mage weapon that you get from Rosaria when you reach rank 2, and you do that by turning in the Pale Tongues, right? Uh, and you don't really see this weapon very often, mostly because it's, it's very odd. It's kind of like the Archdeacon's Great Staff, where it's a catalyst, but it scales with a totally different stat. And in this case, it's going to be Luck. So you're going to need intelligence in order to access the spells that you want, but you're going to need to scale luck if you want to do damage with this weapon. In my opinion, probably the hardest part of using the Mangrub Staff was just deciding what weapon to use. You have a few weapons that you could, you know, compare them to each other and scratch your head a lot. You've got the Henri Straight Sword, which is probably the best option, but it's just a worse version of a Crystal Mage, in my opinion. Because uh, when you compare, like, Henri Straight Sword and Mangrub Staff to, I don't know, Crystal Longsword and Court Sorcerer's Staff, you just have, like, a weaker build. One's more efficient than the other, and it ends up doing more damage anyways, right? So... Uh, I didn't really like that option, the Henri Straight Sword option. Then I looked at a few hollow options, right? Uh, well, let me say, at first I did like, I tested Bleed Dagger and I tested Notch Whip. I did that a long time ago, actually. I didn't like either of those at all. And let me mention, when, you, when you're having your primary weapon be like the Bandit Knife or the Notch Whip, when you do that, you don't get that extra five points for having a hollow weapon in your primary slot, right? So this time around, I went with, the, I tested three hollow weapons, Hollow Uchikatana, Hollow Onikiri Nubadachi, and finally I tested Hollow Corvian Great Scythe. I didn't test hollow washing pole, but that's an option as well. So you could be running a washing pole. I, I'm just not a big fan of that idea. I feel like you're not going to have enough control in the close range because obviously your spells aren't going to help you in close range, which just leaves you with the washing pole, but the washing pole doesn't true combo. So if anyone's really pressuring you, it's going to be kind of a, you know, you already got a katana R1, which isn't your best option just because of the, the hitbox and because of the speed of the windup. But then at the same time, you're not even going to get a true combo if you catch anyone, if, uh, assuming your opponent knows that the washing pole doesn't true combo. So washing pole, I didn't even bother testing that. Uh, Onikiri and Ubudachi wasn't bad. What you can do is you can uh, dual wield it or double wield it, whatever you want to call that, right? And then you could go into the weapon art and try to get the L1. And if you have Karthus Rouge with you, sometimes that would bleed your opponent out if they already have some bleed built up. Bandit Dagger, by the way, you can bring that as like a backup, and if you're fighting something that's weak to quick step, you can just kind of harass them with that. But I found I didn't even like doing that too often. It just felt kind of like, oh, I might as well just have a strictly a dagger build. It's just something to keep in your mind, though, you know what I mean? Finally, with the Hollow Corvian Great Scythe, uh, I really felt like that was one of the better options. Uh, maybe the best option. So Hollow Corvian Great Scythe already has higher bleed than most weapons as a base stat. Then you get the 40 luck. Since it's hollow, it gives you five more luck, which helps with your staff, right? Your mangrub staff damage. And then you put Carthus Rouge on it, and you hit your opponent a few times, and their bleed build's pretty bad. And then you can tell that they can kind of feel that, because they start to back off. You can tell they want to create a little bit of distance, and then you just keep shooting them with your sorceries, so they're in this, you know, uncomfortable situation. And if they're putting too much pressure on you, you'll dual wield the Corvian Great Scythe, because that'll give you access to, like, that three hit. Not a true combo, but it's kind of like a true combo, right? So, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I actually thought it did all right. Uh, I think, actually, what held it back was just the fact that the Mangrub Staff didn't feel too necessary, right? Uh, if I was just dual wielding a hollow... Corvian Great Scythe, I think I might have done better than if I had just tried to put uh, that staff into the build, you know, forcing myself to play like a mage. And that's just because, I, I don't know, you're not, you don't have the orb spells. When it comes to playing a mage against somebody who really knows what they're doing in this game, if you don't have homing soul mass, you don't have a very good mage build. And that was what I found true to be with the Mangrub Staff. It was just kind of frustrating because I would take the orb spells, right? But I can't afford them. Homing Soul Mass, Affinity, Crystal Homing Soul Mass. All of those are way better than Deep Soul or any of the Soul Arrows or any of the Farron Darts or Farron Hail. All of those orb spells are like the only thing, in my opinion, that make mages viable. So if you decided to go with the Henri Straight Sword, it doesn't matter. If you wanted to go with the Onikiri Ubudachi or the Corvin Great Scythe like I did, in the end, it doesn't matter because you're ultimately using a weaker mage setup because you don't have homing soul mass. So 
in the end, it was pretty disappointing. It's going to get a pretty low ranking, the uh, Mangrub Staff will. I think that Corvian Great Scythe is probably the uh, one of the... I think it is the best setup if you're looking for like a Luck Bleed build that uses a Mage Staff. Uh, if you're looking for the most effective build overall, I'm probably going to recommend Andre Straight Sword just because it's a Straight Sword. So, there you have it. The disappointing Mangrub Staff. Actually, let me say this about it real fast before I wrap up. I think that if you're like soul level 200 or 300, that you should, if you want to use this weapon, go for it. You know, if you want to have like a luck mage build and you're a higher SL level, like 200, go for it. Because at those levels, you're going to be able to afford to take your intelligence up to or whatever the highest spell is, maybe like uh, 50 or something like that, you'll be able to afford that, and then you'll be able to use any of the spells on this staff, and at that point it really just becomes, you know, just like any regular uh, sorcery staff. There's nothing too wrong with it, right? It's probably not the strongest one, but it's not bad. So, but at soul level 125, the build is just too inefficient, and your hollow options and your bleed and poison options aren't that good compared to like just having a crystal infused version that does all of their damage up front. So yeah, it's going to get a pretty low ranking. I'm thinking around the D tier, maybe low D tier. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just too bad because it looks very, very cool. I like the way the Mangrub staff looks. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time.